Okay, we'll have a quick look at this question from the homework. So, first of all, it's non-uniform, 6 metres, 30 kilograms, rests in equilibrium, two supports, S and T, where AS is 0 0.5 and TB is 2. When a block of mass M kilograms is placed on the plank at A, the plank remains in hor horizontal and in equilibrium, and the plank is on the point of tilting about S. So I'm actually going to start off by doing that diagram to begin with. So we have A and B. Um, it's going to be tilting about S, which means I'm actually really only interested where S is. So I'm going to put S over here. This is 0.5 metres, which means this whole thing over here would be 5.5 metres. I haven't drawn T here because it's on the point of tipping about S for this first scenario. And I know that there is Mg on this side. And at the centre of mass, we don't really know where it is, but I'm just going to put it anywhere, is going to be 30g. And that is going to be a distance, which is d, because it says that that distance d later on is the centre of mass of the plank from A. Okay, So that's the first drawing that we've got. Then it says, when the block is moved to B, the plank remains horizontal and in equilibrium, and the plank is on the point of tilting about T. So this time, I'm going to ignore the turning point of S, and I'm going to actually just use the one of T. I guess I technically should have put a normal reaction over here. Um, and for this bit, I've now moved the mg to this side. And I know that this 30g is over here. And this is my distance, which is d. This distance here is 2. So we might need to. Is that in the middle? No, it's not in the middle. So you can't do 30 times d, can you? Only one. Yes, you can, because d, doesn't, d is not 3. But it says d is the centre of mass. Yeah, but it's not the center of the rod. Uh, yeah, so the centre of mass does not mean the centre of the rod. It means where does the, the mass like actually lie? So with these two diagrams, if you take... Uh, it, there's lots and lots of different ways that you could do this one. Uh, well, this is 0 0.5. We're not actually sure what this is. So, which I think it's probably best, if I was doing this, I would probably take moments about A for this one. Um, would I take moments about A? Yes, you would. Okay, yeah. So if I take moments about A, I get uh, 0.5R equals 30GD. If I take moments about B for this one, it can do, you can take moments in lots of different places, really. Um, I would get 2R equals 30G multiplied by what? 6 minus D. 6 minus D. OK, so then we get... If I multiply this one, if I double this one, I'm just going to get R equals 30, 60 G minus 60 GD. If I half this one, I get R equals 15 G, 6 minus D. And now I can put these two things together, can't I? So I can, because they're both equal, they're both R. So I get 60 GD equals 15 G, 6 minus D. Cancel out G. Divide both sides by 15, so I get 4D equals 6 minus D. 5D equals 6, so D equals 1.2. And then what you can do is you can do either of them and you can just resolve up and... Well, I should, probably should have done resolving earlier on if we wanted to. So we're now just going to have to take moments about somewhere else instead. So if we go back to this first one, and if I take moments about S instead... It's going to be 0.5 mg equals, if this is 1.2 and this is 0.5, what would this be? It would be 0.7 times 30g. Cancel the g's, double both sides. So you get m is equal to 42. So m is equal to 42. This is not the only way to do this question. I hear I was encouraged by you guys to take moments about A and moments about B. On reflection, what I think I probably would have done is I might have taken moments about S yeah. and not included R here, because then I would have had M and D in both, of the, yeah. in both of them, and I probably would have taken moments about T here, so I would have had M and G in both of them. Um, or simultaneously, what I actually could have done, now that I'm thinking about this again, is I could have taken this statement, and I know that R is mg plus 30g. So I actually could have done that even quicker. I could have said R is mg plus 30g, which equals 60gd. Cancel the g's. 
So m equals 60 times d, which is 1.2, minus 30, which is 42. So there's loads and loads of different ways that you can access that information and pull it back out. Yeah? How do we know that the r and that one, the r and that one are the same? Uh, you can tell me the answer to that. Can I? Yes. Why is the R the same in both of them? Uh, yeah, it's because it's on the point of tilting, but you can just look at the diagrams and tell me why R is equal. Good. The downward forces here are mg and 30g. And 30G. The downward forces here are mg and 30g. So R has to be the same in both of them. Okay. If you tried to do one diagram for both of those scenarios, I guarantee you're going to have a, a messy time. Okay. So, we will now go on to the new part.